Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, we want to also welcome our Facebook congregation. Good morning to you. God is good. All the time. And all the time. God is good. And again, I, I apologize to the Facebook congregation. I know my voice with this mask on is a little bit more muffled than one of the other ones. But the problem I was having with one of the other ones is it kept sliding down off my nose because my chin would pull it down. So I needed something that would hang a little lower. So I needed to go to this one. So uh, bear with me, but I know during the, the reading of the word and the, and the sermon, it is very clear because we, that I have the uh, occasion to remove the mask. Receive something in the mail uh, for us. Uh, I received one at home as, as your pastor, but uh, also received one here. Uh, all I know is it was postmarked from Omaha, Nebraska. There is no other identifying mark of where it came from, uh, but it came, it was postmarked in Omaha, Nebraska. It says, thinking of you and keeping you close in prayer. Rest in his arms, knowing your trust in him will give you peace. Especially at this time, the, what we're dealing with throughout this last year, but also <coughs> the things, the chaos that has been going on in the last couple of weeks, what fitting words those are for us who believe in our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. But they hand wrote a note for us, brothers and sisters in Christ, we are keeping your faith community in our prayers this week. Our prayers will be for your good health, healing, endurance, and a peace that only comes from our Lord. May he bless you and your ministry. Matthew 5, verse 16. Uh, so again, those uh, anonymous prayers, they're answered just the same. Uh, as, as they keep us uh, comforted and, and uh, enveloped in their prayers, we also uh, lift them up in prayer, knowing that God knows who, who that congregation is. Uh, again, as uh, we gather together uh, this Sunday, we receive the gifts that God has given to us. Not only the gift of word, but those of you that are in person, that we get we receive the gift of the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ on this day. And so as we uh, gather together, you will see uh, uh, it's very simple format, uh, the typical format that we uh, follow. Uh, as we then uh, say goodbye to the Facebook congregation, then we move into the service of the sacrament. So as God has gathered us, uh, for a time of worship, for a time, as uh, we talked on Friday in our book group, that, that call and response, that conversation with God, but also that conversation with one another, uh, as we are the people of God, the body of Christ, recognizing the body of Christ, but also recognizing the body of Christ. And so now, as God gathers us together, we take some time for the Spirit to mold and shape our hearts and minds for our worship together. I let the Spirit guide your prayer. Use a hymn verse. Use one of the uh, scripture passages. We do so as the candles are being lit and the prelude is being played.
as Jesus first sees us. He calls us to the waters of our baptism. By pouring that water over us, he enables us to turn our eyes upon him. So we begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. I invite the congregation to please stand for the singing of the hymn. being reminded at where we have erred and strayed from God's purposes, where we fall short of his glory. But it's also at this time where we are reminded what God does through Jesus Christ to draw us back into relationship with him. We bow our heads. Heavenly Father, we have sinned by the things we have done, and by the things we have left undone. Forgive us, renew the shame that clings to us, and make us new creations for the sake of Jesus. Amen. 
Almighty God, in his infinite mercy and grace, sent his Son, Jesus Christ, to die for our sins. In his resurrection, he removes our shame and makes us more than conquerors. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all of your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. We, we are forgiven in Christ. Christ. Our shame is removed. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, who governs all things in heaven and on earth, mercifully hear the prayers of your people and grant us your peace through all our days. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. The congregation may be seated. <laughs> And said, Here I am, will you call me? 
Then Eli perceived that the Lord was calling the young man. Therefore, Eli said to Samuel, Go lie down, and if he calls you, you shall say, Speak, Lord, for your servant hears. So Samuel went and lay down in his place, and the Lord came and stood, calling as at other times, Samuel, Samuel. And Samuel said, Speak, for your servant hears. Then the Lord said to Samuel, Behold, I am about to do a thing in Israel, at which the two ears of everyone who hears it will tingle. On that day I will fulfill against Eli all that I have spoken concerning his house from beginning to end, and I declare to him that I am about to punish his house forever for the iniquity that he knew, because his sons were blaspheming God, and he did not restrain them. Therefore I swear to the house of Eli that the iniquity of Eli's house shall not be atoned for by sacrifice or offering forever. Samuel lay until morning, then he opened the doors of the house of the Lord. And Samuel was afraid to tell the vision to Eli. But Eli called Samuel and said, Samuel, my son. And he said, Here I am. And Eli said, And what was it that he told you? Do not hide it from me. May God do so to you and more also, if you hide anything from me of all that he told you. So Samuel told him everything and hid nothing from him. And he said, It is the Lord. Let him do what seems good to him. And Samuel grew, and the Lord was with him, and let none of his words fall to the ground. And all Israel, from Dan to Beersheba, knew that Samuel was established as a prophet of the Lord. The epistle is from 1 Corinthians chapter 6. All things are lawful for me, but not all things are helpful. All things are lawful for me, but I will not be enslaved by anything. Food is meant for the stomach and the stomach for food, and God will destroy both one and the other. The body is not meant for sexual immorality, but for the Lord and the Lord for the body. And God raised the Lord and will also raise us up by his power. Do you not know that your bodies are members of Christ? Then shall I then take the members of Christ and make them members of a prostitute? Never. Or do you not know that he who is joined to a prostitute becomes one body with her? For as it is written, the two will become one flesh. But he who is joined to the Lord becomes one spirit with him. Flee from sexual immorality. Every other sin a person commits is outside the body. But the sexual immoral person sins against his own body. Or do you not know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit within you, whom you have from God? You are not your own, for you were bought with a price. So glorify God in your body. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand for the reading of the Holy Gospel. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the first chapter. Glory, Glory to you, O Lord. Lord. The next day Jesus decided to go to Galilee. He found Philip and said to him, Follow me. Now Philip was from Bethsaida, the city of Andrew and Peter. Philip found Nathanael and said to him, We have found him of whom Moses and the law and also the prophets wrote, Jesus of Nazareth, the son of Joseph. Nathanael said to him, can anything good come out of Nazareth? Philip said to him, Come and see. Jesus saw Nathanael coming toward him and said of him, Behold, an Israelite indeed, in whom there is no deceit. Nathanael said to him, How do you know me? Jesus answered him, Before Philip called you, when you were under the fig tree, I saw you. Nathanael answered him, Rabbi, you are the Son of God. You are the King of Israel. Jesus answered him, Because I said to you, I saw you under the fig tree, do you believe? 
you will see greater things than these. And he said to him, truly, truly, I say to you, you will see heaven opened and the angels of God ascending and descending on the Son of Man. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, o Christ. Christ. The congregation may be seated. Grace, peace, and mercy from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Have you ever received an invitation to see a special event? Something that's not common and ordinary, something that very few people, for example, what our nation is getting ready to, uh, to see this weekend with another presidential inauguration, being invited to something like that in person. Wow, what an invitation that is. What a special event that is. I had the privilege of going to a, an NBA Finals game. I was also, other opportunities that I was invited to go in the locker room of the Orlando Magic. I even had a, an opportunity working with promise keepers to set foot into the locker room of the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Not your typical place that your common, ordinary, typical pastor, or back in those days, pastor-to-be, would find himself. But whenever you receive that invitation to see a special event, there's a certain amount of excitement that goes along with it. The anticipation, you know, what's, what exactly is going to take place? There's a curiosity of who you might see, who you might rub elbows with, and yes, Shaquille O'Neal is that tall. <laughs> But also, there's a certain sense that when you really soak it all in, you find yourself that you are, you are grateful to have been included in such an event and in such an invitation. Because it's not the matter of you just being there. Uh, it, it, you joined together with someone to be there because somebody probably had to invite you to be there. And so you probably went along, so you got to join in the excitement and the curiosity together with somebody. You got to see somebody that you wouldn't normally be able to see face to face. And then you found yourself in the midst of it all when you could re really reflect that you were a part of something special. So I ask you today, what are you truly ready to encounter? What are you truly ready to see? Not only in 2021, but also in the future. My text today is based on the gospel in John 1, but all of the other readings today, both the, the first Samuel text and also the first Corinthians text, and, and we did read the psalm, but they all interweave in this message uh, today. In fact, I want to I want to go a few verses ahead, uh, I should say behind, uh, that come before our text assigned text in John 1 today. Because when Jesus starts this calling of the disciples, the first disciples he encounters, he says, What are you looking for? What are you looking for? So I ask you, when you come here today, when you watch today, what are you looking for? And there was that time in Jesus' ministry when uh, he was talking about John the Baptist. What have you come out to see? Or I should say to our Facebook congregation, what have you gotten out of bed to see? But as we've watched over the last couple of weeks, haven't we been watching a public spectacle? As I saw those events 10 days ago, 11 days ago, however it was on that Wednesday, my heart ached. My, my head was swirling trying to capture it all. 
trying trying to make sense. Sally and I've had conversations, and I know it was I think just this past Monday. Sally said, "You know, I, I just really don't know how to respond yet to it." And so, as so as I see these texts today, as as we look and see something of a public spectacle, I probably can even go a little further. It seems more like we're watching a dumpster fire. Maybe we might even say we're watching a train wreck. But as one of our uh, All Saints members just recently shared with me, doesn't only happen out in our society. It happens in the church. Maybe you've been part of a congregation where things got built to that point. Maybe you've even been part of a congregation that, that split and became two churches because of the public spectacle, because of the dumpster fire, because of the train wreck that you were watching. And as we see in our text, in the first Samuel text, that's what was happening with Eli and his two sons. His two sons were blaspheming God. It was a train wreck. And that's why God had to call Samuel. As we see the text in 1 Corinthians 6, Paul is, Paul is quoting a, a verse that the people are very familiar with. It, it's a verse that has shaped them from society. Everything is permissible for me, but not everything is beneficial. And boy, we have seen that play out in our country. We have seen that play out in our churches where people have the mindset that everything is permissible. But as Paul says, but not everything is beneficial. And it causes our hearts to ache. But typically in these kind of situations, we see one of two responses. First of all, there, there, there are those who ponder from a distance. Sort of like what I was doing on that Wednesday, where you're dazed and confused. You really can't wrap your head around what you're watching. Can, can people actually get to that point? And especially when you see it in, in a congregation, in a church, and you're in that church meeting and you're seeing people go at one another like that. You're so dazed and confused, you're, you're going, how can this be happening? And then you, you get skeptical. You get a little suspicious. Can anything good come out of this? And then there are those who just simply follow along. They, they start following along with whoever is the greatest crowd. They go and follow along to whoever they are more like-minded with. Some even go along with the ones who are talking the loudest. And that's our second group of people, and usually in these kind of responses, the ones that are simply pondering from a distance, but then the ones that are not only making their stand, they're taking their stand. They give voice to their viewpoint, and they dig their heels in. And what starts off as a conversation of, of trying to have this talk between several minds or at least two minds and, and trying to come together and, 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 and instead, instead of compromising, instead of coming together, they dig their heels in and know it's going to be my way or the highway. And too often, these conversations, they end up not being conversations any longer. They turn into arguments where people start questioning not only what you have to say, but they question begin to question your person. And they begin to criticize who you are and what you have to say. And they, and especially if it's in the church, they criticize whether you truly believe or not. And they start to make threats. All it is is a matter of 
You want to prove your point. You want to protect your truth. You want to have your belief preserved and carried out. One thing our world needs, one thing our country needs at this juncture, especially as we come into Inauguration Week, people need to take time to sit and think. People need to take time to be quiet and reflect. And I'll put the challenge one step further for those of us who are followers of Jesus Christ. Yes, we need to do the same thing. We need to take time to sit and think. We need to take the time to be quiet and reflect, but not only on our thoughts, not only on our behaviors, but we need the time to sit and think, to be quiet and reflect in the Word of God. And, and, and if you're not doing it from this book, at least start at a point like the portals of prayer where, where, where you've got the word of God and, and bite-sized nuggets and begin to work up to this point where you just sit with this. Because what happens when you, when you sit, when you're quiet, be still and know that I am God, and you reflect upon God's word, you get a glimpse of something that you have not seen before. And another thing that happens is you realize something that you don't want to be found. Take a look at your bulletin cover. Because what will happen when you are in, yes, you will get a glimpse of something you have not seen before, but you will get the realization of something you don't want to be found, and that when you look into this mirror, Luther calls it a mirror, when you look into this mirror, look at what you see in yourself. It doesn't look too pretty, does it? And instead of pointing the finger at those people, you got to first start by pointing the finger at this person. And there's something that is amazing that, and, and it comes in this text in John. When you look for Jesus, it is Jesus who notices you. When you look for Jesus, it is Jesus who knows you. When you look for Jesus, it is Jesus that comes and changes your life. Amen. Just as he said to Nathaniel, before Philip called, I saw you. Jesus was already working in the life of Nathaniel before Philip ever encountered him. How? Because he was sitting under the fig tree. That was the place where the scholars read the word of God. And as he contemplated the word of God, he knew something about this Messiah, this Christ, this one that was to come. And that's why he said, I didn't see anything in the scriptures that talked about Nazareth. And yes, the truth is, there's an obscure passage that talks about Nazarene. But notice, when Jesus saw Nathanael, it was because Jesus does what he always does. Jesus comes among us, just as he does today. Just as he did with the disciples, with Philip, with Nathaniel. Jesus comes among us. But not just to be with us. Jesus comes among us 
to be one of us, to take on human form. And as he took on human form, he ministered to the people. As he served them, as he taught them, as he spoke to them, but finally as he died for you and for me and for all of them. For you see, as Jesus in his humanity, he recognizes the questions. He also recognizes the insults and the threats. He also recognized the rejection. And he exposed the truth. He exposed the truth of who and what you and I are. A poor, miserable sinner. But as he comes among us, he just doesn't leave us there. He changes you and me by what we witness in him and in his word. Just like with Nathaniel, I saw you under the fig tree. I know that you are a student of the word. I know your character. In this man, there is no deceit. And as he called Samuel, Samuel who did not know the Lord at that point, but he called him to be a spokesperson. And, and Samuel responded, here am I. And the Lord filled him with his word to the point that not a word came out of his mouth that didn't accomplish what it was supposed to. And we have that great baptismal promise that you and I receive in Isaiah. I have called you by name. You are mine. And, and, and so as, as we are changed in Jesus, as we are changed by his word, no longer can you and I see ourselves as before. We need to see the Jesus and who we have become. Because his word is going to fill that in us through the power of his Holy Spirit. And we will see the Jesus in who we have become. And it's going to alter how we see and how we and the way we talk to and about other people. Some people might say, Where where was Jesus? 10 days ago, 11 days ago, in Washington, D.C. Jesus was there. Jesus was there. We might not have seen it in some of the people, but Jesus was there. I, I'm reminded of the one uh, that was in the Capitol building, that through his brave efforts, directed the crowd away from Vice President Pence. They were within 100 yards of our, our Vice President, ready to do damage to whatever and whomever. But there was that one guard who took him in a different direction. There was Jesus. Because when Jesus is, is in us, he wants us to invite along others to see and to share the greater things than these. The greater things than these. The greater things than these when we see a little child baptized with, with the waters poured over them that brings them to faith. To see the greater things than these when, when words change a life. Sometimes these greater things happen 
at times in a monumental fashion, like Sally and I experienced with our son Andy a few years back. Most of the time they happen in an incremental fashion. You can't really see the changes happening. But then when you see it over a span of time, when you see somebody who was much younger in the congregation when they first came here, becoming a young woman who believes in Jesus Christ, they happen incrementally. But hopefully when you see these things happening, you see them epiphanally. Yes, that is a word. It comes from epiphany. And epiphany is where Jesus suddenly snaps into focus. Where suddenly you get that, aha, there's Jesus. So as Judy ended the text in 1 Corinthians today. That is my hope and my wish and my prayer for all of you as we respond to the events over the last couple of weeks as we move forward into the new administration and how, however that affects our country. One thing it won't change is it won't change the church and Jesus Christ. And so I, I would like for you to remember these words of Paul. You are not your own. For you were bought at a price. So now, glorify God with your body. Amen. Amen. We join together in our common Christian faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I invite the congregation to please stand. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who has conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. And the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life of our lasting. Amen. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their need. Holy Spirit, from sin and sorrow set us free. May we be the living temples be. Spirit. Inspire all people as they serve in their vocation. We especially remember this week the presidential inauguration. We ask that you be with President Biden and Vice President Harris and all others who are taking office during this time. And we pray that not only for the inauguration, but for the days, the weeks, the months, and the years ahead, that there is grace, peace, and safety among us. Grant all people creativity wisdom, discernment, and courage to follow where you lead. From sin and sorrow, set us free. May we be your living temple. Spirit, you are the comforter sent from heaven. Bring your comfort to all those who are suffering and grief. We especially remember this day the family and friends of Pastor David Brighton, uh, Pastor of Mount Calvary and Warner Robbins, and also the family and friends of Ben Fultz. Point them to the hope of the resurrection, to eternal peace and life with Jesus. From sin and sorrow, set us free. May we your living temple speak. Spirit, strengthen all those who struggle with addiction. Break their bondage, lead them to get the help they need, and remind them that you dwell within them. From sin and sorrow, set us free. May we your living temple speak. Spirit, aid all pastors, teachers, church planters, missionaries, musicians, and servants in your church. Especially we remember this day our circuit congregation for this week, Trinity in Athens and their interim pastor, Tetmeyer. Embolden them as they plant and water the good seeds of the gospel. We humbly ask you to provide growth where and when you will. From sin and sorrow, set us free. May we be your living Spirit, 
Look with favor upon all who are sick, injured, and recovering. We remember this day, uh, David and Linda, in, in their recovery from COVID. Denise, as she has back surgery this week. Cindy, undergoing uh, the complications with breast cancer. David, as he recovers from shoulder replacement surgery. George, with his heart problems. Sharon, uh, dealing with her recovery. Sydney, recovering from fusion surgery. Cliff, undergoing chemo treatments. And all others that we name silently in our minds and in our hearts. Have mercy upon them, and heal them according to your good and gracious will. From sin and sorrow set us free. May we be Spirit, we commend all these things to your infinite wisdom and guidance. For you live and reign with the Father and the Son, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. The congregation may be seated for the singing of the hymn.